It has been a great season for both of our teams, and both are fighting for the playoff spot. That is the main goal. This is rather selfish, and Caitlin Clark will agree with this since she once said that. This is perhaps one area where Caitlin does it as well as anyone in sports today. She does not make it about her. This makes her turn the spotlight on other team members and the general achievement of the team. She even manages to behave gracefully when people discuss her with the hearing people around her. Caitlin, we are proud of you in every aspect. Chicago Sky coach Teresa Weatherspoon said she has encountered few opponents as formidable as Clark on this day. This clearly showed that her plan to eliminate Clark failed to work, especially in the second half of the season and this game. The Indiana Fever was more of a well-knit team and handily beat the Chicago Sky. Let's address a key point. Here is what Teresa Weatherspoon had to say prior to the beginning of the game when discussing the process of watching a team develop and that chemistry that you desire. You can tell that they are really starting to come together and play well as Caitlin is leading the way. She has that team running like a well-oiled machine and really using everyone to their full potential. They are playing some really good basketball, so we will need our 40 minutes of focused and intense basketball to be able to match up with them. It was therefore apparent that Weatherspoon identified Clark as the man who made Indiana to be what it was. Caitlin Clark, the star of the show, is always more than willing to shine the light on her squad. When was the last time that you listened to her talking about her achievements? Never. That selflessness is one of the reasons why the Fever are much better than they used to be. She has all the reasons to boast and show off. However, she refrains from doing it, and everyone in the league knows that she is the one to look at at the moment. And though Mitchell may consider herself as one of the best on the team, it is Clark who is at the top of the team. Moving to the Chicago Sky we have, they have been poor in the second half of the season as it stands. They call Angel Reese a star because of her double doubles, but Angel Reese and the Chicago Sky have had a... The approach that Angel Reese is trying to employ here seems to be more self-centered and not team-centered, especially for the Chicago Sky. Let's consider the example of Barbie Knight again. Giveaways like towels, more and more flashy advertisements, and then there is Angel Reese in clothes that are eye-catching, provocative. It's all about her. Now compare that with Caitlin Clark. With Clark, it is never about her, but it is always about the team. What the coach, Teresa Weatherspoon, seemed to be doing was that she let Angel Reese stay in the game to get her stats, such as double-doubles that the team did not necessarily need it. Several times, an attempt was made to foul Caitlin Clark, although not to harm her, but to break her momentum, and Teresa still had no answer for Clark's display. I would like to know what was discussed in the press conference. It is normally the case that the Chicago Sky holds a press conference 12 to 13 minutes after the game, and Weatherspoon came in at the last minute. I always look forward to hearing her responses to critical questions. In what way is she going to measure using these losses? What changes are needed? Controlling the paint is important, however. When you're shooting the ball at a 30% clip, it is difficult to be a factor. Some of these players like Cardoso tried to penetrate inside, but failed to do so. This latest defeat sees the Sky slump to their fifth successive loss, this time going down by 19 points after the previous four losses were by a margin of four points or less. When asked about individual awards, Angel and I would likely give you the same answer. We don't come onto the pitch with the mentality of personal achievement. Achievements. Most people think that is where our focus is, but it is not. I think both of our teams are fighting for the playoff positions. That is the main goal. Our decision to focus only on individual rewards would be egotistical, and Angel would support this. So what is not present in this team? A few issues can be discussed here, beginning with the defense line. They consider themselves as a defensive team, but they do not play good defense anymore. Even after benching their worst defender, Marina Mabre, still more problems on the defensive end for the Lynx. Online, there is this narrative that Angel Reese is only able to get the offensive boards because she has many of her own misses to grab. I checked and found out that 55% of her total rebounds falls under the category of the offensive rebounds, and 70% of these offensive rebounds are from her own mistake shots. But even if you take all of them out of the equation, she would still rank first in the league for offensive rebounds per game, which proves that her aggressiveness in grabbing the rebounds is not only when her shots are missed. I have mentioned it in the past. If everything goes according to plan, Angel Reese is a superstar in the making. She absolutely deserved to be a part of this team, however. For the Sky to overcome the mishaps which have plagued the team, it Angel Reese has had a great season. She was an all-star, she was in the all-rookie first team, and the all-defensive second team, but of late she has not been living up to that defensive role that she has been associated with. It's not just complaining for the sake of it. I have noted before that when she wants to be, Angel is the best defensive 
defensive player at her position on the perimeter. Nonetheless, since the goal became to get double doubles, her defensive performance has declined dramatically. However, like a post player, her shooting around the rim is subpar, and that is a part that needs improvement in the future. However, one cannot ignore the fact that her shooting percentage remains a concern. However, she is making history in the rebounding department at both ends of the floor. Still, neglecting defense seems to be her mistake and thus falls on her shoulders. The opponents are penetrating and getting easy shots in the paint, and Angel has to do a better job of policing the paint and not picking up stupid fouls. Dominating the paint is what Angel is supposed to do, and that is what she did in earning her rightful place in the Hall of Fame. Currently, she is listed 49th out of 54 eligible players in the WNBA for field goal shooting, which is pretty poor for a forward or center. I took that offensive rebound statistic and mentioned that we wouldn't even have to argue if she is getting those rebounds from her own misses or her teammates if she could just convert more of her points in the paint. That is where I differ with the rest of the world and why I think Caitlin Clark should be the rookie of the year. On paper, Angel Reese's stats may seem quite good, although much of it is due to inefficiencies that Clark does not have. Angel Reese is not performing where it is most needed and that is in the paint, which is her signature area. When you prescribe Describe the need to attack, you also have to know when to counter punch when the opponent has the upper hand. In the game, I am the coach. That means those in-game adjustments are my responsibility. This is the first time in the whole season that your team has been able to concede 100 points in a single game. So what is it that makes the Indiana Fever so hard to defend? When asked this question, the response that was given was rather inadequate. The coach didn't explain how to work around Indiana's key players such as Morgan's point guard Caitlin Clark or the shooting guard guard Kelsey Mitchell. Instead, the response was, if this doesn't sting, nothing will. He replied, ignoring the question posed to him. Surprisingly, there were no strategic recommendations on how to deal with these players, which is rather worrying. In terms of playoff possibilities, if the Fever were to face Minnesota, I'm not confident that they can beat them at the moment, especially given how well Minnesota is playing. But based on the matchups, it is not at all unthinkable to expect the Fever to reach the semifinals this year. Just so you know, in the WNBA, the first round is considered to be the semifinals. At one point during the season, especially when the team was 2, 8 or 2, 9, this could not have been foreseen. But the way they are playing now makes it quite possible for them to do so. There are also questions about Kelsey Mitchell and her future with the Fever, and if Max Contract would be able to retain her. If they give her the Max, she's virtually untouchable, which is basically the same as restricted free agency. They don't have core players to use the core designation on Mitchell, so as long as they are willing to give her the maximum she will probably remain. The Fever are very hard to hold down. The only team I have seen frustrate the Fever is the Minnesota Lynx. Angel Reese, however, who was a champion in college basketball with this team as it won a national championship in one year and reached the Final Four the next year, has her own set of problems in the WNBA. The player in question is part of a team that is not very good and which is also quite dominated by Caitlin Clark, which cannot be easy for her. However, the Lynx had a difficult game today and that is that team wake up and lose games. The Sun could be another team which may pose a threat to the Fever. It is important to note that when the Sun was able to limit the Fever to slightly over 30 points in one half, yet the Fever had a total of 84 points at the end of the league is currently in a very exciting state, especially with the increased focus on women's basketball. This is a factor that makes every game and every player's performance more important than it has ever been.